Almost exactly 10 years ago, I created a wedding video called A Moving Moment. And I was a wedding photographer at the time, and the idea was, what if I could shoot really slow motion video exactly how I would shoot still photography? Instead of showing a picture slideshow, I would show a picture slideshow of slightly moving images. But at the time though, video cameras weren't very good, and I remember I borrowed my buddy's Canon camera. I can't remember which one it was, but I remember I borrowed it because it could shoot in 720p at 60 frames per second. And then when I got into post, I made everything black and white because the grain was so bad and the color was so bad. And then I used this plugin called Twixter to interpolate frames and take my footage that was 60 frames per second down to 120 frames per second to get really slow motion looking footage. Now, of course, every single year, video cameras have gotten better and better and better. And I've always thought in the back of my mind, I want to try to recreate this, but I wanna do it with current technology. And finally now, with the Sony a7S III that can natively shoot 4K at 120 frames per second, I thought, now is the time. Let's go and film a moving moment too. Big thanks to today's sponsor, Motion VFX. They make incredible plugins for Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to be using their plugins to give my footage a final look. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but first let's talk about how I shot this footage. So although I used to shoot weddings almost every single weekend, it's been a long time since I've shot a wedding. And I called up my buddy, Nick Gore, who shoots a ton of weddings here in Charleston, South Carolina. And I said, hey man, do you have any upcoming weddings that I could come and shoot a free video for the bride and groom? And he said, believe it or not, I have a great wedding coming up tomorrow. Do you wanna shoot this wedding tomorrow? And I said, let's do it. Now for this entire wedding day, I only had four pieces of gear, maybe five pieces of gear two a7s threes with two Tamron lenses. Right here, I've got a 70 to 180 millimeter 2.8, and the camera that's recording me right now has a 28 to 75 2.8. That is the only equipment I use to actually film. And then I got Nick to bring me a little LED battery powered light that I ended up only using one time. Everything in this video is completely natural light aside from the final shot. I shot the entire day with almost identical camera settings as well. 120th of a second, uh, f2.8, and then I just changed my ISO to match whatever lighting I had in my scene. For white balance, half the time I was in auto white balance when I was moving between scenes really quickly. The other half the time I was manually setting it in a Kelvin mode. I left continuous autofocus on the entire time with eye detect on. This camera does an absolutely incredible job of finding faces and then locking onto eyes. In the rare occasion where it locked onto somebody's face in the background, all you have to do is touch on the screen and I would touch the bride's face and boom, it would just lock onto her face and then lock onto her eye. It does an absolutely amazing job and makes your job so freaking easy. Now, when I compare what I just did on this wedding to my previous wedding photography gigs in the past, this is infinitely easier for so many reasons. First of all, there's a lot of stress put on the wedding photographer. They're kind of in charge a lot of the day. And for the most part, wedding videographers kind of stand back and let the photographer take charge. So for that reason, I had no stress whatsoever. I just let my buddy Nick handle everything and I would just kind of shoot over his shoulder. I'd shoot from another angle. My goal was to just stay out of his way for the most part. But the other thing that's so great about shooting video instead of stills is that most clients want photos of everything. And so I always felt as a wedding photographer, like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna miss a moment. I need multiple assistants to be in multiple places all the time. Whereas with a video like this, I'm just kinda of telling a quick story of the day. The finished product is only going to be four minutes long. I'm not going to have any audio recording. You know, I'm not gonna mic up the couple during the ceremony or the reception or anything. So it was just so easy and stress-free to shoot a project like this. The other reason that this style of shooting is so easy is that when you're shooting in super fast frame rates and you're slowing it down, a lot of the errors that come up in video that you'd normally have to edit out, you can easily edit around or you don't even really notice them. For example, if I was going to be shooting in standard 24 frames per second, I would never handhold the camera. It would just be too bouncy, the footage would look really bad. But the second you slow it down to 20% of the speed, 120 frames per second down to 24, all of the bounciness of my handheld movement gets smoothed out and the footage looks great 
straight at a camera without a gimbal or a tripod. The other great thing about shooting this way is I have the benefit of moving through the footage and finding the perfect second or two to edit. Whereas if you're a wedding photographer, you kind of have to time the moment. You, even if you take a lot of pictures, you're not going to have the benefit that I have where I have thousands of frames to go through and find that perfect one or two seconds. So each time that I hit the record button, I was only taking a five second clip and maybe I'd move the camera from side to side to make it look like, you know, I was on some sort of slider or I'd push in like this or I'd go up and down like I was on a jib. And I probably looked crazy, but I warned the bride and groom ahead of time, hey, it's gonna be slow motion. The reason why I'm doing all these crazy movements, I promise it'll, it'll look good uh, when we get to the finished product. But when I've shot video in the past for other projects, I feel like I'm showing up with all this gear. Even as a wedding photographer, I was showing up with all this gear, lighting and assistance and everything. But with this, it was just two cameras, two lenses. That's it. And everything looks awesome straight out of the camera once you slow it down. Now, I will say I did have help for the ceremony. I called my buddy David and I said, hey man, can you come film the ceremony from the back of the church? It's the only time of the day where I feel like I need to be in two places at once and I can't be. And obviously I don't like walking around and stuff during the ceremony. I don't wanna um, interrupt the service. So I sat in a pew up front and I got these tight shots while David was in the back getting these wide shots. And I'm glad he came because he got the kiss and I did not. You can actually see me in his kiss shot on the left over here and uh, I totally missed it. I thought we were in a Catholic church and I thought for sure that we still were gonna do communion and then they kissed just like out of the blue. He didn't even say like, you may now kiss the bride, it just happened. So as you can tell, it's been a while since I've shot a wedding. Uh, this was not, not even a Catholic ceremony. And so uh, I totally missed it. Thank goodness David got it in the back. Now, when we got to the reception hall, there was a problem that I did not know about until I got back on the computer. So if you try to shoot a job like this, make sure you check it while you're on site. Can you guys see the flicker that's going on in the background here? That is because the lights in the room are these LED lights and they have dimmed them down a little bit and I couldn't see it even when I played it back. This flicker is so light, I, I didn't really notice. And so I completely overlooked it. And then later in the reception, the flicker gets horrific because they lower the lights even further. If I was shooting with a slower shutter speed, I don't think you'd be able to see this, but at 120 frames per second, I have to shoot at a minimum of 120th of a second. And uh, this footage looks bad. And so I have incredible dancing shots of all the family members and everything dancing. I had to edit all of that out because the footage looks so bad. I put a couple of dancing shots with the strobe effect in there, but uh, I sent this to my video buddy and he was like, oh, you gotta fix that, man. And you know, it's giving me a seizure. Uh, so instead of trying to figure out how to fix it, I just limited those amount of clips, but that's probably the biggest mistake I made on this job. For the departure, they had everybody blowing bubbles and there was a street light outside. So the light that's on them right here is totally natural. I didn't need to add another light but I thought maybe the bubbles will look good or they'll look a little bit better if I backlight them. So behind her, you can see that there's a light stand and I used Nick's little LED battery powered panel here. I set it to a bluer color um, so that we'd have a little bit of that color separation, but that is literally the only time that I used a light during this entire job. Now, of course, I had to edit all of this footage together and this was the first project I have ever edited in Final Cut Pro. And uh, it was very different than Premiere. Some things were way better than Premiere. Others were incredibly frustrating and made me edit much, much slower. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on that, go to the link in the description below and I'll put a link to the video where I talk about the two uh, programs. But basically all you have to do is you create a timeline for 24 frames per second or 23.976. And then you click on the footage and you click this little time button here. And then you just go down to automatic speed. And basically that will uh, automatically do it. Whereas if you're in Premiere, you have to go to speed and then set it to 20% and kind of do the math in your head. So it's certainly easier to do this setting in Final Cut than it is in Premiere. So if I remember correctly, I think I had something like one hour of footage at 120 frames per second. But then when you drop that down, 20%, it becomes five hours worth of footage that I had to go through. And basically all I'm trying to do is find like three seconds from each clip that look the absolute best. Once I did that, 
I did some panning and zooming to shots where I wasn't actually moving. And the way you do that is, again, much easier in Final Cut. All you do is click on the clip, and then you can click on this crop button here and click on Kin Burns. And it will create a start and end point here. And then if you wanted to uh, you know, end with it zoomed in on her face, this is obviously gonna be way too fast. You just click done here. And then I can watch this back. And you can see it's zooming in on her face. That looks really bad, but you get the idea. And then the final step was the color grade and the titles that I put at the beginning and the end. And this leads to today's sponsor, which is Motion VFX. If you're trying to get anything done in Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, check out motionvfx.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Check out how many plugins and templates there are. I'm just looking right now in Final Cut Pro. I mean, this is unbelievable. I'm ashamed to say I didn't know about this company, probably because they don't make plugins for Adobe Premiere. But I mean, this is unbelievable. It just keeps going and going and going and going. It's like any type of project you could possibly have, they make plugins specifically for that project. So of course, I mean, goodness, how long does this go? There we go, I finally reached the bottom. So if you're a wedding videographer, they have software here called M Wedding. It's just 99 bucks and that's the first plugin that I used. I installed it and it shows up here in the title menu. All you have to do is drag these animated titles onto your timeline and they just work. Watch, I can just hit play here. This is going to show up. Obviously Helen and Steve are not their names. So you go over here to this title menu and you can see their names right here. And I'll just put Lee and Katie, that's not their names either, but that's my wife's name. Um, and you can see, it just automatically works. I'm accustomed to going into After Effects to have to use these little animations and plugins and stuff, and uh, it is way more complicated than that. So there are tons of these titles. There are these little animations, like if you wanna have like a cake animation or whatever, watch this, we'll watch this play out here. And of course you can move it and you can change the size of everything, super, super simple. They also have these different color grading effects, like you can drop this LUT effect onto an individual clip or you could drop it onto your timeline and that's actually what this is right here. You can see LUT presets. And then what you can do is you can add effects to this and it's basically like an adjustment layer in Adobe Premiere. And this is the easiest way to add effects across many clips. There's also a ton of different effects. There's like film effects, flare effects, dust, bokeh, so many different effects. Here they are riding on the bus and you can see we've got um, really bright light in the background. Let me just add a flare to the back of this and we can play it. I mean, nobody would ever know that that isn't a real lens flare. It looks perfect. And then of course, over here in the title menu, you can change everything about that effect if you want to. And then the second plugin that I tried was M Film Look. And when you install this plugin, it shows up in the effects panel. You can see it right over here, M Film Look. And basically all you have to do is drag and drop these effects onto the clips or onto the LUT preset, which I had above as well. So take a look at this. I'll just uh, drag Cock Crow over here. And basically it gives you a bunch of options that you can quickly toggle on and off. And you can obviously change these as well. Letterboxing, of course I don't want that. Uh, vignette, maybe you do want it, maybe you don't want it. All of these things can be fine tuned as well. This one has film grain on it also. We've got a little bit of uh, warping going on here. Uh, we've got the uh, lens flare. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Again, all of these options can be easily customized. So what I did was I found one of these that I liked. I dropped it onto that effect layer that I had on top of the entire project and boom, it was basically done instantaneously for me. If you feel like you wanna fine tune the exposure or the color, you can just click right here. We could lower the uh, color temperature, make it a little bit more warm here. We could add some more saturation. That looks good. And then we can click on this LUT here. And again, we can change the intensity of the LUT as well. This just makes color grading your footage super, super fast. So to be perfectly honest with you guys, I've never been a huge fan of plugins because they just haven't worked very well in Adobe Premiere. These plugins have worked so easily, so quickly. They haven't bogged down the software at all. Exporting, even with all of these effects, was still incredibly fast. If you use Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve and you're looking for color grading or titles or 
hundreds of other things that this software can do, definitely check out Motion VFX. I'll put a link in the description below. They are a sponsor for today's video, but honestly, these are the best plugins I've ever used. So that wraps up the entire project. If you'd like to see the entire thing, I'm going to link to it in a separate video. It's got M83 music. They do allow you to use their music on YouTube, but I didn't want to mix up a sponsor with copyrighted music. So if you want to see the finished product, go to the link in the description. You can check out A Moving Moment 2. I had so much fun shooting this and I'm excited to do it again in the future. I actually had somebody reach out to me uh, about shooting their wedding and I sent them this video and they said, actually, I want you to do that for me. Um, and that was literally like 36 hours after I filmed it. This style of shooting and editing is just such an easy, stress-free way of shooting. These cameras are incredible. It's almost impossible to miss focus now. Uh, the ISO performance is amazing. You don't even have to worry about lighting anymore. And then when you get on the computer and you can edit everything super fast, and then you can drop plugins on to make it look like it was shot on film or whatever, it's just so easy compared to what it used to be 10 years ago when I started shooting my very first wedding videos. So definitely give it a try, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.